Welcome to Tokyo's Tsukiji Market. It's seventh heaven for anyone wanting to sink your teeth into the vastness of Japanese street food. This one is new even for a veteran of Texas state fairs like myself, where we deep fry sticks of butter. It's pancake batter with a giant prawn in it. Then they just smash it down so the gooey guts run through everything and make a dirty, dirty, fishy waffle. Then they cut it up and hand it to you like a 50 million year old Cretaceous fossil. Get that to the museum, hang it on the wall. Hurry up, be careful. Arigato. Lawson's and 7-Eleven are not what you're expecting. This whole bag of 7-Eleven chips cost me a uh, dollar. They're affordable, healthy food stops, and they're everywhere. Beef tongue, bonita flakes, teriyaki chicken, jerky, sushi. Everything about Subway sushi sounds like it should be terrible. Sounds like an absolute no. Sounds like a don't do it. Sounds like a you're going to die. I will eat this like an apple. And I did. Repeatedly. Every day for two weeks. America is the most expensive place on earth. I don't know why we talk about Japan. One of the most pleasurable parts of Tokyo is how fun it all feels. Bright, flashing colors, weird games, more distracting lighting. It's neon everywhere you look. Maybe it's because I can't read the language that I'm able to find it all so beautiful. I know it's just a bunch of ads, but not being able to read kanji makes it just one big pretty picture. If it's people you're looking for, Shibuya is your neighborhood. This is Shibuya crossing the largest human intersection in the world, and I, a self-proclaimed antisocial introvert, have chosen to come sit right here. It's actually not that busy this time of day. Later on, it will be packed. But right now, it's cherry blossoms in the background and just a few people. Walking it, you see loads of obvious tourists, which begs the question, does Shibuya have a lot of people because it gets a lot of people, or does it get a lot of people because it has a lot of people? It's a confusing math problem. The trains will get you everywhere in Japan. Get a Suica card. Take the blink and you'll miss it Shinkansen that zips you across the landscape at over 200 miles an hour. Subways are crowded, but who cares? It's what you'd expect, people going to work and to play kids on their stupid, stupid cell phones. Here is a different train, one that snakes its way through the mountains near Kyoto to Arashiyama, home to towering bamboo forests and semi-tame monkeys and more of that Japanese magic. The train huffs along the river, and then you can return on the boats. You take the boat back with a team of three, which might not seem impressive if you've never navigated a boat on fast water before. But it's hard, and they do it with one guy on the rudder, one on the oar, and one with a thin bamboo pole to shove off the rocks as they race by. And then on the way out, a smaller boat will pull alongside to sell you snacks. I mean, if you've got to exit through the gift shop, let it sell squid. The monkeys of Arashiyama are mainly peaceful. They sit juxtaposed against the background of the city and paired with the 100 foot tall bamboo shoots, they make Arashiyama a must do if you're near Kyoto. This is Miyajima Island, or it's Tsukushima as the locals call it. This place is an old memory for me. I first visited here in 2006, when it was much less crowded. It's home to Japan's largest tori gate, a floating red portal to the sacred that hovers on the surface in the tide. And there are street vendors selling oysters and bean paste pastries and plenty of hiking trails, but what I recall most is the beer. Table, dude. And with all that food around, why wouldn't they be everywhere? I don't weigh in one way or another about whether you should feed them or not. I can only suggest that if you do, make it flowers or something else that's already part of their ecosystem.
And if by chance a Japanese deer bows to say thank you, out of respect for all that the country's given to you, you bow back.